Welcome to Bodyholic with D. This is part four of a very special series called Creative Echoes, Women Navigating Conflict Through Artistic Expression. We dive into the profound experiences of female artists in Israel amidst the ongoing conflict with Hamas. While I often discuss stress and trauma from a scientific perspective, the essence of the series lies in the genuine voices of those who are living through these challenging times. In a world where life in Israel and experiences of Jews globally has become exceptionally challenging, I truly believe in the power of real authentic narratives. Amidst the cacophony of male voices during wartime, we turn our attention to the voices of female artists, recognizing the cathartic and the illuminating potential their stories hold. Today's podcast guest is Hagar Veltheim, an artist, an illustrator, and an animator, and a mommy, and a very wise woman. Anyway, she is the illustrator for the Haaretz Parenting section, and she serves as the director of its Instagram profile, which is really impressive, and I suggest you check it out. She also holds a master's degree in design from Shankar. Hagar possesses exceptional talent in illustrating emotions that honestly can't be described in words. At least I can't. It makes her truly a creative force. Our conversation, which I was lucky enough to have with her, really moved me deeply. Hagar advocates for artists to create. She emphasizes the importance of moments spent with her three girls during these challenging times. She discusses the delicate balance of sheltering their young minds while allowing them to process information that is suited for them. Without further ado, let's dive right into the conversation. Before anything, I just want to say that I'm in love with your work. Agal, Thank you so much. <laughs> I really am. And I'm so happy that you're here uh, because and and i'm and i'm i i'm talking about this also in the introduction but uh, i want to i want to say to you that you are able to illustrate what i can't put into words and i'm and i'm pretty okay with words i'm yeah. i mean I've, that's <laughs> that's kind of where where i shine and i have to say that that there are things that are way beyond me and you nail it and you are so talented. So I'm, I'm so really much. grateful that you're here. And um, even though uh, I am talking about you a little bit on the, in, in the introduction and I do uh, introduce you, that's, that's, I add that in later so that I don't embarrass you. <laughs> that's um, <fine. laughs> but I do want you to say maybe a few words about yourself and your journey uh, as an illustrator. Okay, um, so uh, this past year and almost a half, uh, I've been an illustrator and digital director of the Haaretz Parenting Instagram page. And most of the illustrations uh, go on the Haaretz uh, uh, family section. Um, this has been the last year and a half, but before that, I did other jobs and my main, my day jobs were uh, related to social and uh, graphic design and because illustration basically is a very hard thing to find as a day job it's usually or uh, it's usually a side job or if you can uh, be an, an independent illustrator that, that's great uh, but it's very hard um, in the last few years, the high tech uh, community uh, started to to grow more illustrator jobs that were per se illustrator jobs, uh, but it still was hard to find. And I'm very grateful for for this um, 
that is to have happened for me. Um, so for me throughout the years, uh, it was always a side job. I did all kinds of projects uh, alongside my day jobs. Um, I studied uh, illustration in Shankar for the for my bachelor's degree, and I have I have a, a master's in uh, design, which is not relevant to illustrator, but always have are always happy to have another like aspect to to design. Um, my main uh, illustrations uh, throughout the years were um, bi biographical. I had a f uh, many years. I had a, for many years. I had a blog uh, of personal experiences. I had that. I had that throughout the throughout the school uh, school years uh, in Shankar, and then afterwards, I had. Uh, the same blog uh, turned uh, to some kind of fashion illustration blog, and that's how I uh, rolled into my other jobs in the in the fashion industry. I was a graphic designer for a few brands, um, and that was my my route. Uh, so now my day job is illustration. It's I'm and I'm very very grateful for that. It's pretty rare. <laughs> That that's that's rare and amazing. Um, and the reason I reached out to you is because right now, I, I guess it's it's thanks to the connection with Haaretz, perhaps. But um, the the recent ongoing war that we've been uh, facing. Uh, and the event specifically on October 7th in Israel, um, you, you really are one of the only artists that I'm interviewing who uh, has been very active since then. And uh, like I said, things that I can't put into words that my brain kind of can't wrap itself around, you actually are able to communicate it beautifully. And so it's very interesting for me to hear how it, from you, how it has directly influenced your journey as an illustrator. Um, but since you're also a mom, you know, feel free to also touch on, yeah. on those things because it probably all mm -hmm. kind of funnels down into that, you know, everything kind of goes into a single illustration. You have so many aspects to you. Yeah, so I dropped that in the beginning, but I'm a mom of three girls. Um, so it's always uh, finds its way to my art and my work, uh, especially these days. Everything that happened affects the house and how we live here and how we uh, communicate with them and our conversation and every, really every aspect of the day to day. Um, what's happened since the seventh? On the seventh, I, I, I would like to talk a bit of, about my work uh, for this past month. On the seventh, I already talked to uh, the editor of family section from the, from the family section, and we started to uh, talk about how to communicate. Uh, what's going on and the 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 main subjects that, that we talk about that we talk about and that we post and I illustrate some of them and some and some don't are how to talk and communicate with our kids about what's going on so on on that day when we still had no idea of the capacity of what's going on on that day we already started working on the conversation that we're going to have with the kids and uh, started posting about that and um, you said that I, I put into words what what you can I I I have a lack of words so I mm. imagine it in lines and that's how I I try to communicate the, the feeling that I have because because writing is like it's not it's not as powerful for me as I uh, as the lines and the colors that I that I can use uh, to express uh, 
uh, what's going on. And I I'm fortunate that the first few weeks I had the I had the work that that, that my day to day job uh, is because I couldn't freeze. What happened to a lot of artists that I know uh, in the first few days. They just froze me me included i i couldn't do i i knew that i had to do something but i couldn't do it by myself i i, I had no capacity to start working on something uh, on my own so my daily job forced me to confront a, um, a lot of subjects and i had no choice but if i had the choice i would probably wallow in the in those feelings instead of working on some of the in some of the early work uh, from the first few days uh, one of them one of the first few uh, works that I did was um, in the first few days there were already um, clips and videos of what's what's been going on and we talked about and, and there were articles about uh teenagers watching those on the phone on instagram and social media and and the fact that parents i, I have to be aware immediately that that this is going on and um, so i have i had um i had created a short animation of uh of, of uh, a burning phone and uh, so all all these kinds of topics um a lot about mental health and uh, even um, relationships between couples doing the work. Those are the the main subjects that we uh, that we touched in the articles and that I confronted through the work. And it really it, it was therapeutic to me through mm -hmm. uh, through this um, work. I'm I'm looking at the burning phone right now. And uh, I'm gonna ask you for permission to for the YouTube version to uh, to link it and so people can see uh, mm -hmm. what you're talking about. I mean, that's that's really that's like I, we don't understand how dangerous it is to see certain things because I mean that that's gonna end up being PTSD for someone who wasn't actually in the event, but it's in their brain, it's in their head. Yeah. Um, so you you are on a major mission, and um, I, I spoke to many artists. I'm very very lucky to have spoken to many artists, and most describe the uh, the freezing for the first few weeks. Um, some are still there. I have a very close friend who's like a, a major rock star. And uh, we are now, I think, 52 days into the war. And she's 100% frozen. frozen. Yeah. yeah, yeah. And which I completely understand. Yeah. And uh, you, think so, about it, you think about sorry. it in the historic perspective, because you know, we already know that this is a, an historic, horrific event. Mm -hmm. And we know that everything that comes out of this period is document it, it will be documented it, it's a mass of work in every art form that we will know after it for after this for years so right. everything feels this this much more uh, substantial and heavy and you feel like your work has to be correct but, uh, but that I, I I want to I don't know if if there are artists listening, but that uh, is a, a key point for artists because we have all sorts of uh, exercises that the exercises that we do to ourselves, how to release like uh, to release the hand before we start illustrating or whatever artists other artists do. To the to for their methods, but uh, so we have to find a way to to feel more free 
uh, to create, even if it's not the right and correct words to put in a song or the right and correct color mm. to put in, a, a, in the illustration, because it's... Um, there is uh, an importance to creating right now and not afterwards. There will be, uh, there, uh, there will, there, it's, it's important to create afterwards for sure. But and that's going to happen. It will be, yeah, it's going to happen. But I think right. if you force yourself, it has a, a good quality to it as well. It's a, it's a therapeutic process even if it's not like the best work you've ever done, because it's meaningful for you and for your audience and for people yes. um, who come across your work. And um, even, even if it's not the best, that's what I'm saying. It's, it's important to create right now because those feelings that, that those feelings and the, the process that you connect to right now, it's it's different. Mm -hmm. It's different, and it's it's different because it's not the cathartic post traumatic. Um, yeah, yeah, because we're living it, uh, it right process. now. Right, and and what I have to and the reason you know I, I I've mentioned this a lot when I when I'm talking to people that I'm I host a well being health and fitness podcast, and it's very scientific. And we get into like the nitty gritty of like, how many reps should I be doing for a bicep curl to grow my, and you know, and we get into DNA and, and the thing protein. is that since, yeah, and protein, exactly. And the thing is that since October 7th, the only thing that I found, and it took me a moment to realize this, that I found was I would even go as far as to say saving me um, and my sanity and my well-being was turning to people like you and uh, who who were allowing me to process whatever I'm going through, right? Because I don't have the artistic hand and I'm not in the recording studio and and I, I I'm really leaning on artists for my personal well-being and, and sanity, which is why I was like, let's, you know, let's bring these people onto the podcast because right now we're in kind of survival mode in terms of sanity and well-being. And sure. this is the one thing that is really helping me except for working out. But also very soon, I'm not going to be able to work out. I'm going to give birth pretty much any minute. So it's really like I'm I'm really leaning on artists and the importance and the impact that you have on the layman, right? The person who's not really in yeah. the creative realm is huge, is yeah. huge. And on the basic well-being and health plane. I have to mention two artists um, that uh, start creating uh, pretty fast, uh, which is uh, which are uh, Zoya Cherkesky, Cherkesky, uh, and uh, O uh, Yogev, I think, uh, and their illustrations were straight up documentary uh, from the horrors that uh, that they heard or that they read on the news or that they saw in videos, and that mass of work is so important and not everyone has to be that they they did a great job and I, again i'm turning to to the artist audience or whoever creative uh, that feels frozen mm -hmm. those this the, uh, that mass of work is amazing and so important that that they created and now Everybody has a space to create a new mass of work in their own interpretation and uh, their own style to uh, to to tell about the the feelings that they have or, or the 
or the, the things that they heard. Um, we are working, uh, I'm working with the editor of, uh, of the family um, uh, section um, uh, on, a, on a comic series about what's what happened on those days that you don't see what happened in inside the homes of people of regular people like in the midsection of Israel that didn't have ha they, we had a lot of sirens but not as much as the south and Ashkelon and uh, what happened to families that one went to the reserve, what happened to our nerves. So we're working on uh, documenting like those little moments that seem so unimportant, but they're, it's, those really are the important moments because we keep on living through these days and, we, and, and it's important to document that as well because we need to know and remember how we live through these days. Absolutely. Um, Absolutely. So you're in the middle of working on this right now. Yeah, I created already four pages of different stories. Um, one uh, that I want to tell is a friend of mine. I asked around um, mainly women with children because that's our main uh, main uh, subject uh, on the um, on the uh, on the on parenting section uh, on the parenting section. Uh, so I talked to a friend of mine, and she said that she she lives in Tel Aviv, and she said that she was walking uh, with her with her three year old um, in Tel Aviv, and then they came across uh, the candle um, the massive candles that they have uh, in uh, I think it was in Dizinkov uh, Circle. Yeah, and he was so excited to see all the candles. He didn't know, so he was so excited from the candles, and he said, "Mom, can I, can I lit a candle?" And she was so emotional, and she obviously she didn't tell him what 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 are the candles for, but she cried, and then he, and they then they lit a candle, and those this that little moment is so surreal to think about that that a small child is excited about candles, but the candles are a symbol for the souls that we lost. It's, it's just surreal. So this small moment totally. is, it has to be documented in some way. So I, I relate to this story so much. I'm sure that any mother um, in that, capacity and like the center uh, what you're saying the center of Israel where we're dealing with it but not as intensely as you know the people more in the north the people in the south um it reminds me of when you know I'm listening to my daughter she's four and a half she's telling people about uh certain things in her kindergarten and you know and she's always very excited to say that in her gun, there's a shelter. So we had to share our gun, our, our kindergarten with a gun is the uh, Hebrew word for kindergarten. So we had to share our kindergarten space with other kids who didn't have a shelter. And she's always very excited to say that her kindergarten has a shelter. And she says it very proudly. And uh, I, I so relate to that where it's like, it's surreal. Yeah. It's just it's surreal. You can't imagine unbelievable. a reality that you that a four year old and my three year old she heard she heard me explain to my uh, seven and a half uh, the process of the iron dome because we heard some um, uh, explosions but we we had no sirens but we heard the explosions and she was scared so I explained to her and I explained that. We're safe because we're in the center, and and the position of our apartment is very safe, and all kinds of explanations. And she parroted it afterwards. My three-year-old sometimes when we had sirens, 
she started saying, she started explaining the Iron Dome because she heard me say that. And it's, it's right. insane. Right, right, right. Absolutely. Oh my gosh. Oh. Um, so this is actually, this really is, you're already answering the, the next question that I, that I had for you. And, um, but, and, and so what I'm, I guess I'm inviting you to even elaborate more on your personal experiences. Um, if you can elaborate on personal trauma, um, that has influenced your, a creative approach, not even, you don't even, if you are able to, because I know this is a very personal question, but maybe, maybe, maybe even go beyond October 7th and how, um, you're, you're able to express these emotions through your visual art. Um, first of all, uh, I, I, I read the, that question in this morning again. And I, I, I have no personal trauma that I connect to and, and uh, work through my art. But a good artist in all forms of art uh, can relate and connect to to trauma or to um, real life or other people's experiences through their art uh, because they have a, a different uh, point of view because they because they can relate I think many many years ago I heard sting talk about uh, the song Roxanne that he wrote and he talked about a uh, writing someone else's experience, someone else's experience. It's not his experience, right. uh, but that a good artist can, can see something and imagine the inside of that experience and then create uh, that art through that. And um, so that's how I feel. But in this case, um, it's a bit different because uh, the 7th of October, uh, other than the personal traumas of the people who would actual, actually experience it, it's, uh, there's a sense of a collective trauma of, mm -hmm. of all Israelis. And this historic event, horrific event, has uh, uh, affected everybody. I don't know any Israeli that it didn't affect them, even here and even abroad. Israelis that I know abroad, they they felt the pain on the on the day and throughout these fifty two days they feel it they feel it it's mm -hmm. it's you can't explain the connection and the uh, and the the, the sensory uh, effect that that this that this had on people it's because of that because of this collective feeling, it's very easy to be inside the thing. You know, you don't need a process or a method uh, like, uh, like creating a story about somebody else because you're in it and you're in it all the time. We, have, we, mm -hmm. we, are, fun we are fortunate because most of the time the, gr the girls were home because at the beginning there, were, there was no school. So we didn't open the news. We couldn't open the TV with the news at home because we didn't want them to see. And we were very protective of that. And um, so we learned everything on our phones, but it's not the same. It's not the same uh, massive information and visuals that you see all the time uh, as in houses that the TV was on all the time. It's very different. You can choose to, to be on the, your phone all the time, but it's still different with this, the soundtrack of the news all the time. Uh, so so it helped, I think, I, I don't know about my partner, but I think it helped the whole house processing things better when, it's, when it wasn't uh, on all the time. Mm -hmm. um, 
but still again but still the the collectiveness of the of the of this historic event uh, it it immediately it immediately puts you in the, the space that you can create because you're there mm-hmm. you you don't need to right. to have a, a different experience like I said the 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 small moments of what happened uh, in the back uh, yeah. in the the safer areas yeah yeah they are still crazy it's not a normal life it's not a normal life right I was having a conversation this morning with a friend of mine <clears throat> who's a uh, leading journalist and um you You know he was saying if uh, kind of like you and I started off our conversation today where we were saying because uh, as as Hagar and I are recording this, we are in the last official day of the exchange for hostages and it's um and ceasefire. And I was saying to him to my friend that, All, I, I just want all the hostages home but I'm also afraid of the ceasefire because um I'm so afraid of what they're capable of doing and and so the fear is is very very real and it's um it's so multifaceted because I'm also afraid for our brothers and sisters and, and kids that are there. being held hostage and I'm also afraid for you know I, I remember the first few days I I mean this sounds so ridiculous now that I think I mean I I felt like it was ridiculous then um but I didn't care but you know <laughs> I I double locked the door I double checked I triple checked I I put stuff against the door which you know I I know that like it probably wouldn't help or maybe it I don't know but But, um, to think that, like I was just pushing furniture and and uh six packs of water against the door is just shows like the very, very, very basic sense of fear, yeah, and um yeah, where wherever I have, we are. I have I have one page of comics about that by. But- about locking up the house do you really yeah amazing uh, I spoke I spoke with a friend uh, whose husband uh, is in the reserve and she documents a lot of her feelings online in her stories and I thought it would be interesting to ask her uh, personally what's what's going on and she said about she talked about the the end of the day uh, of locking up the The house and yeah. that that I don't know if still now but in the beginning she was sleeping with both her of her kids and and uh, in the drawer by the bed was a knife oh she God. had a knife because of the yep yep Yeah, we're basically we're we're in the we're all in it really no yeah. matter no matter where we are in the country um, and yeah and even outside of the country like people people are scared and uh, people are hurt and brokenhearted and yeah this is this is very global already and yeah um, You have you have so many uh, themes that we've already brought up like the what's happening in the central center of Israel the the little the seemingly little things that we go through on our day-to-day life um you you mentioned the burning phone which I I'm looking at I, I have in front of me I love it um are are there any other specific questions artworks or themes um, that you would like to mention or talk about given the struggle um one is yeah one is um, the, the past week uh, or so 
I, week or two, I, I felt the urge uh, to create something of my own and not related to work. And I started a series of posters and the last one is animated uh, with voicing out the, the call of uh, bringing them home now. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And the last one was uh, I, I did, I finished it on the day that uh, that on the first day of the hostage release and I I um I created a, a little girl that's being held uh hostage and then you see her uh rise up and run and her dad stands with with the uh poster and then she runs up to him and they hug. So I hope to see all of the families um join and and be whole again uh, I still don't know if I if I if I like continue that series I have three and um, but mm -hmm. but throughout this conversation I thought about um, what we talked about the the historic moment that we're living in and we need to remember that there are a lot more ahead because it, it's it, it's not related to the war itself. There are a lot of people who lost their house and who are, are living in hotels or at friends' houses. And the the rise that we we will experience afterwards and will be will have to be documented as well because our whole lives are going to change. And the fabric of each community is going to change. If some, uh, if people from other uh, um, cities or kibbutzes or are moving to different uh, geographical uh, position, it will things will change. It's not the same. Nothing is mm -hmm. the same. So we need to still to still have uh, a very uh, um, an open eye and heart to these experiences as our, as artists and as documentaries uh, through words or whatever form and to know that we need to remember and to be kind and to, to remember what's happening um, Absolutely. so it's not over it's not over so we need to think about the day after I, I don't even, I can't even imagine when it would be over. I'm thinking of right next door to me, uh, there's a, I have a neighbor and her sister is living with her now because she uh, was, I, I can't believe, I can't believe she survived what happened in uh, her, her kibbutz Neil Oz. And um, you know, when I, when I first saw her arrive, she was very, very bruised. It's very hard to see someone, uh, over the age of 70, so bruised. It's, it's wow. like, it's, just, but she just happens to be a majorly strong fighter. Like, it's almost like she demands that you don't feel sorry for her, you know, just by yeah. her presence. Um, there's an but illustrator. It, but it, that created a, a graphic of like a grandma winking and it said, don't mess with a kibbutz grandmother. Right. Totally. So I mean, you can even see that when with, Dana with the women coming back. I yeah. mean, that's, that's exactly my, my husband and I are sitting that we're looking at them come back and we're like, this, this is like, this is a lioness. Um, and I'm thinking, you know, there, there's the so much aftermath. There's and and of course, you could probably relate to what I'm about to say. Is you know, there was Abigail, the four year old who returned um, yes, home so. yesterday, and uh, she was three until Friday, and then she, um, and and she was actually declared missing, uh, and then and then they brought her home, and. You know, all I'm thinking about, because I know what four years old is, because I have a four and a half year old, 
and I'm and I'm thinking, okay, she's back. That's one thing. And we all were waiting for her to come back. And then then there's how do her grandparents and siblings go about telling her that both her parents are killed? And I'm sorry, like this is, you know, we're we're getting into difficult things. And that's the thing. It's like the aftermath. It's what you're saying. It's so, we don't even know what's ahead of us. I mean, this is, that's just one point of the aftermath. I can't even imagine. And yeah, um, yeah it's, it's, it's too much. It's a lot. And I think uh, touching on that and remembering that is so important because we're in, we're going to be in need of a lot of compassion towards each other. Yeah. Um, I, I've been, uh, anybody who's on my Instagram knows that I, uh, get very angry at the world and I'm offended <laughs> and my feelings are hurt. <laughs> it's a, it's but, a bad it's a bad time to be to be offended and angry at the world because everybody's insane. Right. Right. So I've been de- I've been dealing with uh the first two weeks I was deeply like I was really offended. I was crying. I was I was like speaking yeah. to the world while bawling like and then and now I've I've shifted over to like wow, like the world is, is leaving me speechless the way the the anti-Semitism has risen hugely. And um, also the uneducated speak so loudly. And uh, I was, I was wondering about you and, and how, you feel about the current state of the world and their response and is it influencing your work at all or just on a personal level i feel that it hasn't really affected my work because i'm not very global i'm very uh, local with my work so i don't have that conversation on my it with my audience Uh, but from a personal perspective, I, I'm waiting for them to... I'm very surprised of the mass of people that pretend to care about subjects that they don't, that they know nothing about. They can't even, I don't know, they can't even tell what they're, what's going on in their own country. So that, that's, that's what blew my mind. But right. so I'm, I'm like waiting for them to find a different subject because usually right. that's, that's what, what happens. They find an, another thing to, to, to complain focus about the, the thi- yeah. yeah, to focus on the thing is with anti, uh, anti-Semitism is that that I don't think will die down because it's not even the Israeli subject. Project. it's just right an excuse to be horrible it's an right. excuse someone who was anti-semitic just have has a, 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 an opportunity to raise their voice right now because it's 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 fine no it's nobody cool. will say anything yeah right 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 yeah. now's the time there was a, a designer that I saw in, a, in an interview a, an Israeli one who said, And he was he's working on uh, different types of uh, communicating what's happening in Hasbara and, and he he said that liking Israel is is it's a boomer thing. It's not cool. So that's what they're trying to change the the perspective because mm-hmm. it's not cool right now to like Israel. Mm-hmm. So mm-hmm. everything piles on that. A hundred percent. Um, and, and I'm like becoming kind of okay with that because yeah. I can't, I can't, <laughs> I can't keep crying and being angry and offended. I'm just like, all right, there's, uh, that's, you're saying things that are very strange and yeah. 
that's none of my business. Like at this point, I'm going to, I'm going to just do what I can in my little bubble and everybody's going to do what they can in their little bubble. And we've got uh, people who are interviewing beautifully and um, speaking out beautifully. It's, it's, uh, it's really amazing for me. I, I think that was my big thing where I couldn't believe that anti-Semitism existed. I, I, I clearly was so naive before October 7th. Yeah. Because I lived in, in the post-Holocaust world. Right. All of us. And the, the denial of what happened on the 7th is absurd. And the denial of the Holocaust is, it's insane. These yeah. stuff are insane. And the, the thing is with anti-Semitism and, and racism in general is that it has nuances. So you can be a, a raging anti-Semitist and like it comes out in nuance in your conversation so it's okay mm -hmm. and it was okay until now and now you have a place to to rant about it even louder but and i think we all have i, I i'm not examining us from work because i think we all have a responsibility of what we uh, what we put out and what we voice out to the world because we all know people that are not from here and we have that responsibility to to talk to them and and, and um, make them aware of what's going on and what happened and it's not about fighting with <laughs> bots or or, right. or pro Hamas uh, people online, you don't have to do that. Uh, it's right. to each is to each to their own. But but you do have a responsibility if you share something, share something substantial that that is related to what's happening. Because um, I read that Mike. Uh, mm, uh, no, I don't remember her, his, her, his name, so I won't say it. But some reporter that's, that's very pro-Israel, uh, he's British, um, he said that we need to remember... Are you saying Ellen, Douglas Murray? Yeah, I, I forgot. I'm just in love with him, name. which is why, which yeah. is why I'm <laughs> So yeah. he said, he told um, uh, Ella, uh, who's doing a great Hasbara for Israel, uh, if you know her, her account is Ella Travels. She's okay. Oh, yes, 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 yes. So he told her that we need to remember that a lot of people that are not visible to us have no idea what happened. They have no idea. Right. From their perspective, Israel started the war. Right. They have no idea what happened. So we need to remember that mm -hmm. and to voice out what happened is and is still happening. And people have lost their homes and families. And it's not it's not just a date it's it's a, a, on, it's a, it's an ongoing event absolutely so, and and it goes back to what i was saying like i'm i'm scared of the ceasefire cuz cuz they also promised to keep doing it um yeah. publicly absolutely um if if you can speak substantially like you said uh please do absolutely and um and if you don't know what you're saying and if you're not the clear shirt. on it <laughs> please yeah yeah i was having a conversation uh on the the first episode of the series i was interviewing now uh, matt guggenheim who's just a uh a very active and talented artist, uh, singer, songwriter. And she was, we kind of got into this area of the conversation and, and I was like, stay out of it. Like you're, it's so harmful to say things that are, that are not, I, I love the word they use that are not substantial. Um, but yeah. And, and also, if you are promoting peace in a peaceful way, in a way that is compassionate and, and filled with empathy, then also, I mean, we need so much more of that. And you're definitely yeah. doing that. Um, thank you. Thank you.
Thank you. If there is anything else that you would like to add, please do. Just thank you for this interview. It was a very nice conversation and for your platform and for bringing women, women, women's voices, which we haven't talked about at all, but it's so important right now. And there are all, there are piling evidence of strong women who fought and, and did such amazing things this month, this two month, these two months, but they, they do it anyway. But now we have proof um, and we need more more women's voices absolutely absolutely thank you again thank you so much thank you